It's been two years. It took me two years to build, well, that's an exaggeration, but it took me a long time to build this building for Ben and Amanda. There have been some successes. There have been some things that we could have done differently. All in all, it's a solid win, starting with the fact that it blends right into the house. I mean, the overall location and size and roof pitch and color makes it seamless. And that's a goal when you're adding on or renovating. But follow me, I'm gonna show you, the only way I have to describe it is the good, the bad, and the ugly. The things that are always gonna be satisfying. The things that, you know, you can live with, but you wish that you had done a little differently. And the things that dog on it, you hope nobody ever gets a look at. Come with me. Let me give you just a quick lay of the land, kind of what's going on in here. First of all, this is the kid space. They've got teenager, teenagers here, they've got young boys, they're all musicians. And so this is where the garage band happens. We may show you a little bit of that. We have a lot of fun with music in my family. This is sort of workshop area that Ben is moving into. He's got lots and lots of electrical outlets. There's a bathroom, small but uh, functional, right in here. And then here's a closet under the stairs with the water heater and various additional storage. Ben's office is upstairs. From Ben's perspective, he was getting a workshop slash laboratory and, a, and an office space. And he's been living in that and using that office space since well before the final inspection, I can tell you that. Item one is a foundation. This little building has an excellent foundation. And the first part that we can see is the nice job that Dustin did burning in or burnishing or polishing this floor. It's a nice, tight, hard trowel finish. It feels good underfoot, it sweeps nice, and the water is easy to get out of here once it drips off the cars. The downside is I spent $600 too much on the footings themselves. Let me give you an idea of where that happened. This is a monolithic slab. That means the footings and the floor were all poured at the same time. I had a brand new 24 inch bucket on my brand new excavator and I was a brand new operator. So I did not hang that 24 inch bucket far enough outside of the building line, which meant that the trench I dug was big inside under the floor to receive the concrete that was going into the footing and then coming up to the floor. Bottom line, six or maybe as much as $800 of extra concrete in the footings. But nobody complains about extra concrete in the footings once the pain of the purchase is forgotten. What they have is a very strong, very well-supported building, and that extra amount of concrete as a percentage of the whole effort fades into utter insignificance. So now I'm on the back corner of the, of the project, and here's a little bit of something that I wish I would have done differently. This is the end of the block retaining wall. I should have brought that block retaining wall this way, like maybe 32 inches, so that this grade, this gravel that we put in for drainage, would be up against block as it tapers down to at the angle of repose to the grade down here, but instead it gets actually almost in contact with that trim, and it's only about three inches away from the siding. That is not great. Now, is it sustainable? Yes, it's sustainable. But if anybody ever owns this and doesn't pay attention and dirt and debris and leaves stack up against this, that's gonna be a rotting issue. So, not ideal. Catastrophic, no. But if I would have been paying attention, I would have brought the foundation across and terminated it right there. So as you remember, this whole project was pretty much a one-man show. And we illustrated a lot of ways that one guy can do the work of a crew if he has time and patience and the right tools. And the single, the MVP, the most valuable player relative to being able to do this project by myself was the scaffolding. Some of it was borrowed, some of it was purchased, but without the scaffolding, there's just no way that I can get up there and do that. Now, so that's on the plus side of the ledger here, looking at the outside of the building. On the minus side of the ledger, but will be improving, is this white gutter water pipe. You see that? That carries roof water from the downspout over there on that end. It's this high because it has to be transported clear around the end of the building over to the storm drain system, which was located back in the opposite corner of the building. So in order to preserve the fall, in order to get the water that far, it's clear up here to where when we put the landscaping in, it's only going to barely cover the pipe. Now it will cover the pipe, except right down there where it comes out from underneath the sidewalk, I think there's always gonna be a little white PVC that needs to be protected from the sunshine 
somehow. For the rest of my life, or at least for as long as I ever come over here to Ben and Amanda's while they live here, I'm going to be bugged by this. This was a lack of foresight on my part. I should have had this downspout coming up out of the roof water system so that it would line up perfectly with this downspout. You see this? These PVC fittings, I had to put this little transition in here and it's just ugly. Now could I have done it down here? Yes, but by the time I got in here the gutter boys had already, it's just, it's a thing. So I've asked Amanda to be sure to put a big bushy pot of something beautiful here. We'll have irrigation water coming up through that little sleeve. So eventually this will be out of sight, but it will never be out of mind. So this is the last item that I have to own as being a mistake and it is entirely my fault. Do you see anything wrong with this picture? Here's what's wrong with this picture. If you draw a line down the nose of these steps, it's supposed to be six foot eight from where you're standing to the top of the door and instead it is six foot three. Now the inspector did not recognize it, he didn't catch it, he didn't force us to do any changes. But when I was using this space and laying it out in the design process with the, with the amount of distance we had to gain vertically and the amount of distance we had to use horizontally, I had this last rise right here at the inside of this partition. So as you step out of the, off the stairs into the space, your head is coming down pretty close to the top of that doorway. What I should have done was purchased a seven foot or a seven and a half foot or an eight foot door to go here. It would have looked fine in this big space. It would have operated fine. It would have cost probably 200 more dollars, maybe 250 more dollars, because it has to be a fire door. It would have been expensive. But this problem would have been obviated. And if Ben hits his head on it again, I'm gonna get him a new door for Christmas. So I'm planning on doing a separate video on the cost breakdown on this project. It's kind of complicated because, I mean, I worked here for a solid year pretty much, and so assigning a value to that, I don't know. But we are gonna to come to you with some analysis of the costs and what they spent to make this happen. So I've gotta say, that's probably about it for the mistakes, and none of them are catastrophic, and one or two of them are embarrassing. But in general, the, the, the space, the intention of the project is being fully realized. I mean, it works great for this family. It's going to work great for anybody. And let me show you the answers to a couple of questions that have come up in earlier videos to just sort of check the box and make sure some of you know how some of the items worked out that you thought might have been problems. Some of you have asked, what's the deal on those walls? Those walls in the garage don't look right. Well, they look perfectly right for fire tape. It saved $1,000 to not go ahead and put another coat of mud over this and then texture the whole thing. It was a judgment call. Darren gave us the option. Look, I can just leave this as fire tape and save a little money. Yes, that sounds good. It's a workshop and a, and a garage band room down here. In the upstairs office, it's finished off to a very nice, very professionally rendered orange peel texture upstairs in the living area. Down here, fire tape is code compliant and looks plenty good for a workshop. This little bathroom worked out pretty good. There was not much space. Needed to maximize the space over there for the kid use and workshop space. Needed to maximize the space in the stairway for getting furniture up and down. And so we got a full bath in here. Well, three quarter bath, right? There's no tub. Ben did a good job on these doors. I'm glad he did it, not me. They actually work very well. Not my cup of tea, reading instructions and interpreting little puzzles in stainless steel and glass, but it's watertight and it operates smoothly. And then one particular question, when you watched Phil trim out this toilet, you thought, wow, some of you said, hey, that tank is too close to the wall. It's never gonna go on. And you're right if it would have had a rim in the back, but the rim is on the inside. Fits perfect. Good job, Phil. So speaking of good job, Phil, I mean, he roughed this in really nice. Ben put this little backsplash in. Everything lines up nice. Very utility, big, burly, useful sink to have in a shop area. And Phil's foresight once again helped us, like he pointed out when he put this the drain in. He got the outflow, he got the connection points exactly right to maximize storage under the sink. 
get the water out. I mean, it always is a pleasure and sort of a surprise how many things Rokas is thinking of long before you get there. It's fun to come in here when these boys are playing, right? I mean, they do rock and roll and they do some jazz and they do some... Kelly has them playing old-time fiddle. It's just a lot of fun. But there's a neighbor back here who doesn't think it's that much fun, especially when it's electric guitars and trap set, right? So if you have some recommendations of ways to sound dampen, you know, the space a little bit, just to kind of try to keep, keep the chaos close to home and not the other people's homes, let us know. Put some notes in the comments about success that you've had sort of with sound isolation in a space like this. One thing that I learned is that these stair railing brackets are just way better. The ones with the round escutcheon and one center, center um, bearing screw hole is just way better. It makes a uniform application. You just twist them to comply with the slope or leave them level on a level run with one big screw into the middle of a stud. It's so much better than the traditional ones where you have three screw holes in locations that don't do much good. And anyway, so if you have a choice and you're comfortable with this appearance, these are oh so handy. So now we're up in Ben's office. You probably saw me throwing down this little floor up here. The office was, I don't know, at least 50% of the reason for the whole project, but let's ask him. Son-in-law, best son-in-law in the world, Ben Brewster, behind his bank of computers. Five monitors is never too much, right? That's right. So what percentage of your interest in doing this on your property was driven by this office? Hmm. It definitely was twofold. We, uh, we needed a place to build, a place to do things in, the shop downstairs, and I needed a place outside the home. But I would say this was probably the larger driver, so call it two-thirds of, yeah. of the motivation, and the rest of it is for other projects. And how is this space working? Is this what you visualize? Is it as you move in and get settled in? I mean, obviously you're not completely packed in here yep. yet. We're going to cut in an opening, a window, mm -hmm. so you can see down into the shop proper now that the inspection's passed. Mm -hmm. Let me fill you guys in on that. The reason for that is that was supposed to be a one-hour firewall between the garage space where, where vehicles are parked and living space, ostensible living space, the office. And a window is not part of that calculation, but it'll be just fine. And so with that window in here, how's this working? It's fantastic. It feels like home. It's a place where I can set up my own Legos and books and work yeah. undisturbed with a lock down at the, at the foot of the stairs. And uh, Amanda can take care of all the kids and the daily in and outs that are happening all day. Yeah. and let me do the work that we need it to do It makes you feel family. professional again. You're part of, part of the yeah. university experience down here. Yes, instead that's, of being in a good. bedroom working there. Yeah. Uh, way better. And, and this ductless mini-split system is just the ticket? It's perfect. Yeah, right. it blows hot and it blows cold and it yeah. keeps the temperature exactly right. Oh, that's yeah. good. Ben put the carpet down. He was, I mean, at the end of every project, at the end is a cost savings phase, right? And so they decided, no, we can buy these glue-down squares at one of the box stores, and he did a nice job for a computer geek, <laughs> frankly better than I would have done. He ran the nosings on the stairs, and it, it all just, it turned out great. Well, that's it. It's a wrap, and that's good because I'm a little tired. But I'll tell you what, it's been a blessing in my life to have been able to engage with this part of my family in this significant way work with these guys and watch them work with each other and wear myself out bringing something to pass that's going to be good for my people for a while. And we all have chances to do that. And it's not always the same thing for everybody, but everybody has a chance to be useful if we're interested in being useful. And so do that. Should we, should we just be useful for a change instead of just obstructionist or difficult or selfish? Life's too short for that. But let me just close this out by saying this. If you're interested in any of the things that we've done here or in the other aspects of the construction and blacksmithing things you see on the channel, we have something called the Essential Craftsman Academy. It's a subscription group. Lots of information. But the most significant um, aspect of the Essential Craftsman Academy is shop talk. Twice a month, we get together in a Zoom meeting, real time. Dozens and dozens and dozens of people who know so many things 
and we come with our questions and our answers and our projects and our photographs and the, the things we've seen and the things we've done and the things we don't know how to do and there's always somebody there who can help you solve the problem and you can get all of that for less than the cost of a hamburger and a box of fries every single month it's not much money and it's a lot of good information so if you're interested in that go to the website essentialcraftsman.com have a look we'd love to welcome you into the essential craftsman academy and whether you do that or not i want to personally thank you for watching essential craftsman and keep up the good work one or two. Oh.